TOA and Fit Body Boot Camp, Fit Body Forever Communities. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Robert Linkle, trainingtheolderadult.com. I hope you're all doing great. I want to talk to you today about one of my favorite human beings on the earth, <laughs> Dr. Mike Isratel. I absolutely love this guy. If you haven't checked out his Instagram, it is Renaissance. Let's see. Here we go. Renaissance Periodization. He's got 1.97 million subscribers. That's what his page looks like, if you can, can see that. There you go. Renaissance Periodization. And he's hilarious. He's one of my favorite people. If not, let me, let me put it to you this way. He is the only paywall that I pay for on the internet. Like the, well, that's not true. I have Dr. Atias too, but that's like his membership. So as far as YouTube goes, it's the only paywall. I give him $6 a month or whatever it is to be able to get his member exclusive content because it's that freaking good. So anyhow, this was from one of his videos where he talked about, uh, what was that guy's name? Brian Johnson, not the liver King, apparently some other Brian Johnson. Nope. Not the lead singer of, of YouTube or, or not YouTube, uh, of, uh, ACDC. It's some other Brian Johnson. I don't, I don't know the guy, uh, but apparently he was talking about um, longevity and Dr. Mike makes a bunch of jokes about him being a bit of a vampire, which I get it. He's a little Dracula-esque, but at the very end, he gave us this list. And so I wanted to talk about this list. I thought he made some really great points in here on how to enhance your longevity, just generally speaking, number one, stay on the lighter end. That basically just means don't carry as much adipose tissue, extra body fat, as you can. Now, on each one of these, he's got like little subcategories. So if you watch the, the video, you'll see them as they come in. And he talks about, you know, yes, it's if you're a bigger human being um, like myself, I'm 245 pounds. But do I need to be 245 pounds my entire life? No. I mean, I could probably lose more body fat and probably end up around 215 or 220, something like that, as a 70-year-old man, I would love to be, you know, 220 at 70 years old and still have, you know, at least six foot two of my height in here. I would love to maintain that last inch, inch and a quarter, keep me at six, three and a half if I can, but I leave it, I leave it to my bone density and my resistance training to help me stay there. However, the less dense, the less, uh, or not the less dense, the less body fat I carry, the less stress placed on my body. And so I think that's probably a pretty good one. But he also talks about keeping a low body fat as the next. So you're like, all right, so on the lighter end means not being as bulky muscularly as well. So in, in, in for his case, he's a competitive bodybuilder right now. He just cut or is cutting to do a show. Looks amazing, by the way. I, I haven't seen a whole lot of people that have a vacuum abdomen like he does. Like he can protrude his belly and you're like, that guy's fat. And then he pulls in and vacuum tights and all these veins and vascular. And you, oh, he's not fat at all, right? He was just, he can, he can push his, um, his abdomen out and then retract it and pull in. Frank Zane had the ability to do this really well too. A lot of bodybuilders can, but those are two that really kind of come to mind. Anyhow. Um, you don't have to be, you know, competitive bodybuilder, bulky your whole life. You could just be strong and be content. And so maybe back squatting your body weight, he suggests 10 times, but I think at least once would be awesome if you could do that or any variation of pulling your body weight off the floor. If I'm 220 or 245 in my case, can I pull 245 off the floor? Yes. Can you bench press 245 or do something similar to your body weight? Yes. Should you be able to do more? Probably, but could those be like base standards of strength? You're good to go. You should be able to overhead press your body weight with one arm. 245, I'm just kidding. No, that's not a good one. All right, so we're keeping not ex excessive amounts of muscle mass on our body. We're also keeping excessive amounts of body fat off of our body. <coughs> Excuse me. Eating a healthy diet, for sure. Higher on the protein, in my opinion, higher on protein, especially as you age. That's going to help you keep some of your muscle mass. It's going to help you keep your bone density. It's going to help you overall in, in, in keeping a good, solid strength-based system going. But on the other end, with your carbohydrates and your fats, you don't really want to deplete those or reduce those. You just want to have healthier versions of those, in my opinion. So if I could do 40% uh, protein and then 30-30 fat and carbs, that's great. So it's not a huge change. And most of the time, you're like 33-33-33, right? Something like that. That's fine. 
but in this case, just a little more protein, a little less of the other two, I think you're golden. Maintain some muscle. Yeah, that's gonna be your resistance training component. And he talks about twice a week as a bare minimum. I think that's, that's good. And that will definitely maintain a solid muscle mass uh, uh, on your body. And when I say solid, meaning like whatever you kind of your day to day is throwing at you, working in the yard, carrying the groceries, you know, that kind of thing, you're going to be fine. But if you're having to, you know, scale a tree, or if you're having to wrestle a bear or a mountain lion in my case, or, you know, whatever, if you're doing something extraordinary, and I, I all jokes aside, you know, mountaineering to climb Mount Shasta, you're going to run a, a 30k race, like, any of these things where I've got to put in some extensive training to do this, that's a different story. Now we're talking about, okay, you need to have more training than twice a week to accomplish that. But if it's just basic life, I want to just stay strong, keep doing what I'm doing, two days a week would be great. And I would say 30 to 60 minutes. But would four days be better? Yes, I think so. I think having more often but less time would be ideal. So instead of 30 to 60 minutes, maybe it's 20 to 40 minutes but it's four days a week. Monday, Tuesday, rest, ruck, recovery days on Wednesday, and then Thursday, Friday. Now, if you're gonna do that, a Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, you could do upper, lower, or you could do pushes and pulls, or you could do a little bit of full body every single day, that would be fine too, with maybe one lift where you're like, I'm gonna crush bench press today, next day I'm gonna crush my deadlifts, the next day I'm gonna crush overhead pressing, the next day I'm gonna crush my um, squat, right? Something along those lines. And that way you have full body every day, but you're also emphasizing, you're elevating. One left is going to be like your big key one that we're going to push. And then the other stuff is just, let me check all the boxes. I get all my other muscles trained. Something like that would be good. Okay. And maintaining a good cardiovascular health. So if we're lifting two to four days a week, we also want to do cardio on a regular basis. Now, LSD, long, slow distance, not the other LSD. Come on, you 60 deadheads out there, not that LSD. Okay, long, slow distance. Kind of old school cardio. Get on the treadmill, walk slash run for 30 minutes, you're done and you can say, check that box, I got it done for the day. Is that better, more efficient, more effective than 15 minutes of high intensity interval training on the ski or the bike, the battle ropes, the slams, right? Sandbell slam, something like that. Not necessarily. Sometimes higher intensities at smaller bouts will give you better return. So it doesn't always mean I need to do LSD long, slow distance on a bike or a treadmill or whatever or not. You could go swimming one day and work some intervals. You could go for a ruck, walking with weight on. You could do a bike ride. You could do a, a run. You could do a swim. You could do any cardiovascular component that you want, but having some undulations in your heart rate while you do it is better, in my opinion, than just, okay, I did 30 minutes of the exact same three miles an hour on level two, right? That long, slow distance, nothing ever changes. There's some value there, but is there more value in having these rolling hills, if you will? Absolutely, okay? Try to incorporate that as often as you can, even if it's for shorter bouts. Manage your stress, huge concern here, huge concern. And Dr. Mike talks about, you know, years of the same, my stressful job, my this, my that, my kids, my spouse, my whatever it might be that just brings all this stress and anxiety and constant worry to you. Definitely takes years, if not decades off of your life. There's definite research to support that. The less stressed we are, the less stress and anxiety we put our bodies through, the better. You have insulin uh, re re ramifications in your body's ability to uh, stress respond to that. It, it really, it's, I shouldn't just say insulin, it's across the board on almost all health measures are affected by your body's ability to manage stress and function under it. So can keep that in mind. It is rather important to take vacations, to take weekly breaks even daily breaks where it's like for the next 20 minutes, I'm just going to turn off all my stuff and meditate or just have some alone time or go out and ground, put my feet in the, in the grass and sit on the swing or sit in a chair and just chill out while I listen to my favorite podcast or, or whatever, right? Even if you just want to unplug and just not be connected to anything, that would be great too. It's something where you are having some opportunities to de-stress yourself. 
multiple clients of mine. I can I can just think of a couple of you right now where you're like, my entire day, it's booked from minute to minute to hour to hour. I've got so much work. They're in here checking their emails while we're training. And I'm like, man, just leave that. Let this be your hour where you're de-stressing. We're going to get all this out of you so you can go deal with all that later. You'll work more efficiently when that time comes rather than all these little constant stressors as we go. So definite stress management, anxiety management in your life is a good way to go. Have a good relationship. This goes with your spouse, for sure, your significant other, whoever that other person is in your life, if you have one, and hopefully you do. And if you don't, that's okay. Have good friends around you and or family members that you can stay connected with. Those good relationships, the um, social facilitative engagement of training with people is really fun. I notice this and how I miss it. I do love my alone time when I get to lift in here. I do a couple of workouts every week where it's just me. It's just my time. I'm lifting. I'm doing my thing. Then I have other ones where I'm on virtually and I'm recording and I know other people are going to see it and I try harder for sure because that other person is present. That's social facilitation. Now, if you get that in person where the other people are actually here, that's even better because now we get to socially engage and facilitate better efforts. I get to do that on rare occasion in here, but every time I get to go out to a fit body facility, I get to do a workout with everybody. I get that, that enjoyment of training with the group. It's so fun. And then the socialization with everybody afterwards, before and after and photos and all that kind of stuff. It's super fun. It's really engaging by photos. I mean, the, the group takes a big team photo at the end and somebody is celebrating their uh, hundredth workout or their birthday or their first workout and they hold up the signs, like all that stuff. It's so fun to be engaged with all that. I do miss that, that team camaraderie. So when we talk about relationships, it's not just your spouse or your significant other or your family or your friends or your workout partner. It's kind of all of those. Relationships in your life are really important. And unless you know, you're, you're uh, uh, I don't know, Ted Kaczynski, you know, the Unabomber or whatnot, and you're living in a shed out in the middle of nowhere and you like being by yourself, you like being secluded, most people, 99% of people want to be around other people. They want to have engagements. They want to have, you know, an opportunity to connect and be uh, seen and be recognized and heard and have that opportunity to connect with others. It makes us feel good. It gives us purpose and it gives us energy and excitement and connection to others. It's a good thing. So make sure you're getting as much good relationship work in your life as you can. And then on the other side of that is have a passion. He talks about research of people that don't have a passion or a commitment or something that they're striving to get better at from work, passion, to hobby, to video games, any of those across the board, whatever you're just striving to be better at, something you're continually working on and striving to be better at is a a longevity marker, you'll live a longer life in the pursuit of your passion rather than not having one at all and thinking, oh, this is reducing stress out of my life because I don't play video games. I don't have a wood shop. I don't have a passion of a project or whatever that I'm working on. It's better to have that. So get into wood carving or knitting or underwater basket weaving or, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. That's it just whatever your passion is, whatever your efforts in work might be. But remember, this, you don't want to be so overly passionate about it that you never stop. And now you become a workaholic. That's where the work one kind of kind of changes. Like I have my my training that I do and I consider that if I needed to label something as work, it would be that. But then my passion is the education side, what I'm doing right now. This is the thing where every day I'm like, I, I look forward to everything, but this is the one where I'm like, ooh, what do I really get to create today, progress today, bring to the table today to help others improve? Like that's my passion project. And that's where you see, uh, man, I'm really into this. And, and the, the beauty is like the workouts that I do with my clients and all that, that feeds the passion. I get to practice it all here. We get to sample it and then let's review and now let's teach it over here. It, they go hand in hand. So you can have some things that are rather close in connection, but it's the constant pursuit of the passion as you go through. And he put on there, he's like, what else am I missing? What else are we thinking of? Sleep was the other one that we saw in the comment section. It was number nine would be, would be sleep. Make sure you're getting adequate amounts of sleep and probably as we age a little more sleep than less meaning uh, your body is going to have a certain amount of sleep needed to function at a good level on a daily basis. Some people, six hours, okay? 
others need nine hours, my wife. And, and that's good. Once you know your number, you're like, I got to make sure I set myself up to where I can go to bed at 730 and wake up at two and I get my six and a half hours of sleep or whatever, you know, whatever you're, you're pursuing that effort. I go to bed at nine. I wake up at seven, whatever it is, like, you know, your hours have that set and that sleep bank, if you will, needs to have deposits put in it on a regular basis to make sure you're functioning as well as you can on a daily basis, but also recovering and allowing your body to recover. So when the time comes to lift, which I'm about to do right now, you're about to get your lift on, your body is rested, recovered, reducing risk of injury and maximizing potential of outcome. Meaning I'm going to, a, hopefully because my body's working more efficiently, I'm gonna train better to achieve that goal and get to that higher level of whatever it is that I am pursuing. All right, gang, if you can think of anything that I left out or that Dr. Mike left out, remember number nine is sleep. That was the one we added in there. Give me a holler. I have proper nutrition, you can definitely look at hydration and you know the, your supplements and all that kind of stuff. That kind of all goes hand in hand. But if there's something else that we're missing, let me know and we'll create maybe a, a little image of this that we can kind of put up and be like Dr. Mike and Rob's you know keys to longevity. They're all his. I would love to meet Dr. Mike someday. And if somebody out there knows Dr. Mike and your buddies and you can connect us and hook us up. Hook a brother up. I would love that. Dr. Brad Schoenfeld knows him. I know they work together and Brad and I are buddies, so maybe I could connect to him that way. Anyhow, I love Dr. Mike. I think he's my spirit animal. And even though we look eerily similar, I think that we may be related somehow. Other than the fact that we're both bald. I am a foot and a half taller than him and he's a foot and a half wider than I am in musculature. Uh, I think we're probably not related. <laughs> okay. That's enough for me. Have a great day. I love you all. Hope you're doing great. Enjoy your day. Make it a great one. And until next time, continue to fight your good fight against sarcopenia. Take care.